What's up y'all? Welcome back to Fishing and Surfing Charleston. Talking today about the demon crab fly. Its colors are really good for stained water and murky water. Dumbo eyes. I do like bee chain eyes a lot more. And uh, copperly like UV triggered effective bright colors as kind of combed out as possible. Black threads. Get some traction distance of the hide. Just working, working this thing. Feelers, legs, kind of light it on fire. Yeah, products like this. All right, there you go. Start the wraps. Space for one more set. Make sure all those fibers. That's a wide-eyed demon crab, but. Oh yeah. Choke the EP. Make that EP demon crab. Jeez. What's up y'all? Welcome back to Fishing and Surfing Charleston. I'm Jacob. Talking today about the demon crab fly. I've been using it a lot lately. It's been catching fish. Uh, super easy fly to tie, matches this channel. I've done a couple really simple kind of beginner flies that work really well. This one in particular, these colors are really good for stained water and murky water. Now this is sparked up by the season. It's getting warm here. It's about 95 degrees during the day now. We've had a couple really good dead low tides in the middle of the day where fish are fired up and angry and have eaten the absolute life out of this thing. First off, I'm gonna show you how to tie the fly. It's super easy. It is not a uninvolved tie. And then I'm gonna show you a couple clips and describe how I work this fly. Now again, this is definitely a murky water fly. A lot of flash, there's a lot of gold, there's a lot of bright, and then the body is EP, purple, and black. All right, let's talk about some materials. Really, as far as the hook goes, you can use any hook you want. I always keep all my stuff in these little organized tackle boxes, all kinds of different hooks. For this particular one, I like a thicker gauge jig hook. Seems to work a lot better for uh, crab flies. It lets everything kind of dangle on the shank of the hook. And then it really has a nice weedless offset eye to get it past reeds and then we'll throw a weedless on it. Now let's talk about weight. Um, I have tied a couple and they have been catching fish with dumbbell eyes. Now these aren't the biggest, but it's just the size below. I've also tied a couple with bead chain eyes. I do like bead chain eyes a lot more. Now when prescribed, dumbbell eyes definitely get to the bottom faster and let fish that are tail up, nose down in the grass or in the mud find it faster but just the way it throws and the way they sink, like the sink rate of bead chain eyes, is just perfect in my opinion. And it also lays flat. It hits the water really a lot softer. Actual fly materials. First of which, I like these silly legs in the chrome and uh, copper. Super good for the crab legs. Those also can be substituted for the silver ice legs. Both really good. I've made it with both colors. Next is the flash. One of my favorites is this uh, gold crystal flash. Super nice, really like UV triggered holographic effect. And obviously crystal flash, just like one of my favorites for shrimp and crab and all kind of different uh, shellfish and whatnot. Super nice UV activated, like purple, life like antenna look. Remember you can use any colors you want, but this is just for the demon crab and what colors I used. This is the Tiger Bard Magnum. Rabbit strips, super nice, effective, bright colors. I think they contrast really well with the purple and black. And for the purple and black, I always use this EP brush, and this is the crab brush. Now, it really doesn't get any easier than this. Um, it's already tied on. All you basically do is find the wire on the very middle of the strand and tie that in, and then start your wraps where you normally would be uh, making that loop for your dubbing, and then kind of dabbling it in, making sure it's good, twisting it, and then starting the wrap. This effectively does the whole thing in one step. So I love this stuff. It is not expensive. I always support our local fly shop, Fin to Feather. They got tons of stuff. Like I don't even think online fly shops could have as much stuff as Fin to Feather. So please hit them up. Um, as far as tools you need, just the normal stuff. I mean, I have a used stand. I love this thing, it's great, but I do recommend one with weight so you actually have a decent uh, bottom to kind of tie and you're not like the, the stand isn't moving all over the place. I do like this uh, dubbing brush. 
for this fly because this is definitely one where in combing out the legs and making sure everything is as kind of combed out as possible you want every fiber to be in a line so this thing was like six bucks so uh for your bobbin simple effective cheap bobbins are fine i'm using black thread and actually getting quite low so hopefully it makes it through um you're going to use a little bit of glue whatever you like it's good just make sure it's like low fragrance the fish can smell that stuff um some scissors to trim the dubbing whip finisher if you need one of those i love mine and last but not least uh i really have been liking these life flight crab legs now you can use whatever you want and you can substitute this for uh, feathers or brush or whatever. The fish don't care. I just think a little extra life really kind of brings this thing all the way around. So let's get on the stand and let's get going. All right, let's get started. You got your stand, put that hook in there. Do not tighten this thing too much. I've had a couple hooks that I've tightened too much that have really clamped in there and the hook has broken. I've heard from multiple incredible sources that Putting your hook in too tight definitely weakens the uh, structural integrity of the shank of the hook. Start out with that bobbin, black thread. Let's get some traction for some weight on here. Cut that excess off. Now whatever you choose and whatever you're fishing, you're gonna wanna select that now. I'm actually gonna just go ahead and use that Dumbo eye, cause it's the last one I have. Tie that on, figure eight. All right, wrap towards the back of the hook now. And we're gonna start building this thing one little bit at a time. Take a little bit of that Tiger Bard Magnum Rabbit Strip. And I mean, I don't use much for this. If you're measuring in distance of the hide, I usually go about finger for the tail. And you're gonna tie this hide up. So when this fly sits on the bottom, you're not gonna be able to see this hide. It's not what you want in there. You want that fuzzy, nice, bright popping color. But work your thread to the back, do a couple loose ones over the back of this thing. Kind of continuously, you should be taking your fingers, combing everything back. Just working, working this thing. Step one, complete. Next, we're gonna tie in some of that flash. So get some of that out, whatever color you like. I usually do three to five two three inch strands. This could be antenna, whatever. Feelers, legs, whatever the fish think it is. Start on one side, do your loose wraps. Do three loose wraps. And then take the other side. Pull it back, working both sides. Again, every now and then check this. Make sure you don't want anything popping out. You want this thing to last through multiple fish. And after a couple wraps, you shouldn't be able to just pull fibers out. It'll stretch, but they're in there. I mean, it's like a exponentially tightening clamp that is your thread. Next, we are gonna tie in some eyes. I'm all about supporting local fly shops, but for simple kind of expensive items like these eyes, they're so expensive and so easy to make, so. Take a 20 to 30 pound fluoro, just kind of light it on fire. And you'll see the eye building. And you gotta work it and kind of get it perfect, but when you do, you'll have a nice, perfect eye. And after enough time and burning yourself, you get products like this. I didn't even paint this or color it, it's just like how the plastic likes to burn. Super, super evenly and then turn black. So you got two eyes. So let's tie those in on each side of the flash. And if you want them to stick out even more, just kind of take the 
eyes and wraps some line behind them. So they really stick out to the side. I kind of like mine hugging straight in, but for the sake of this video and the flexibility of this fly, I will show you everything. So there's one of them right there. You can kind of see that sticking out. Just trim the end of your fluoro. And then tie the other one on the other side. All right, there you go. Two eyes that you didn't have to pay for. A little bit better angle of what's going on with this. But the last thing we have to do before we start the body is attach our crab legs. So find the middle of the legs, make a couple loose wraps on one side, flip it down the other side, and bam. After that, we're gonna start on the EP brush. And that starts with just finding the metal wire, tying that in on one side towards the back where you want to start wrapping. And then bring your thread up to where you want your first set of legs to go, which is normally, I mean, you can go a little further back. Enough for like two wraps. So start the wraps. Continuously combing every fiber back. Bam. Looks good, everything's nice and clean. Wrap that behind your vise. Let's attach the first set of legs. Again, silly legs, copper chrome, super nice flashy legs, super durable. They're made out of rubber. They're like little rubber bands and they work so well. Let's tie the first one in, pick one side, tie it in, a couple of loose traps first. Oh God. And then kind of peel that back and wrap the other side. Now we're going to trim those legs. So length really doesn't matter. And then work your thread back to where you want your next set of legs to go. This is the most important. Grab those legs, Kind of just peel those back so you can wrap in front and they can stick out of the side of the body and be separated by the EP brush. All right, next set. Again, peel those legs back before you start to wrap again. Make sure everything's situated. Space for one more set. All right. There's your nice little Afro Puff Crab Starter. Now get to where you can find a stopping point. Make sure all your legs are held back, comb all your fibers back, and then just kind of finish this EP brush off, intersecting these fibers with your thread so you can get a clean finish. Trim the EP at the brush. Careful not to clip your thread or any legs unused. Bam. Take your comb. Make sure all those fibers are nice and out of the way. Whip finish. And we're going to start trimming this body. Now the trimming begins. And that's why this bad boy comes in handy. Really nice for fluffing all these fibers out. You want them to be as straight as possible. And basically I just start going at it. I grab all the legs 
at once. Make sure you're not going to cut anything. It doesn't need cutting. You just take giant chunks off the top. Like basically parallel to those eyes. Around the sides, just making a nice crab body. Tapered. Switch around to the bottom. Pull all your legs the other way. The worst thing is finishing this fly and then noticing you've cut your legs super short. Not that it really matters, but it is definitely annoying after you tie a few. Just cut the bulk of this EP. Get everything out of the way. We can really start dialing this in as a crab. Fly is going to sit really nice. Beautiful. Continuously checking, making sure your trimming is crucial. There it is. And that's a wide eyed demon crab, but bam. Trimmed up, thick body. It's going to move water, it's going to sit upright what you want. Let's put a little weed guard on it. I like making a loop weedless setup for these. It's on the jig. Basically secure the bottom then work some threads behind. And bam. That's it. Trim off the ends. Smooth everything out. Whip finish. Time. A little dab of that. I like doing a little dab on the dumbbell eyes if you haven't already and near the eye of the hook. Let it soak into all that. That's it, the demon crab. All set up, ready for low country waters. Ready to crush some saltwater species. Even though this probably would crush a bass too. I would just let that dry for a little bit and check and make sure everything looks good. Now, this is a good fly for kind of leading fish a lot and letting them find and then kind of twitching it a little bit. This is not a fly meant to be fast strip towards fish. I've tried it a couple times erratically, it does not work. Nothing about a crab flying at a redfish makes them want to eat it. Now I have donked one on the head with it and gotten an eat, but that's different. It was in the grass. I went out on my paddleboard and hunted some on the flood tide this past week. It was about 7.2 out there and it did phenomenal as well. 
after scanning the area and finding fish, it really was a matter of just putting the fly in front of the fish and getting noticed. It was pretty windy and uh, drifty. A lot of tide, a lot of current. It was a late high tide. I was fishing sunset oh, yeah. and these fish were pushing up quick. Oh yeah. Let me get a look at this guy. Ate that EP demon crab. And yeah, that's crazy. Rod. Jeez. Oh, that. What a sunset though. Honestly, cannot believe that just happened. It was right by big water, and I really didn't know how big this fish was before I hooked him because he ran so hard. I actually broke my Allen, uh, what is this, the Volant, the replacement of the uh, Zemith. Thing. Now, donking a fly on a fish's head could be a crab falling off a reed, could be a bunch of stuff. I found in most scenarios, no fish want a smaller fly or anything thrust at them fast. It's best to let fish stumble upon your lure or fly and then kind of twitch it and erratically strip it like it's trying to get away, not like edging it towards them really fast. I don't think it, I don't think it works nearly as well. Anyway, simple fly, simple tie, easy to catch big fish with this. Definitely a summer fly, but this fly can be tied for any season, winter, fall, spring. As long as the water is the right clarity, this thing will perform. Well, that was dope. Damn, I can't believe my rod broke during that. Like I've li I just caught that 31 and a half with Ace on the same thing, like bought the hell out of him, but Maybe he weakened it, but that's crazy. It broke. It was like an 18 inch red. It was a borderline pop. Oh my God. Look at, look at. 31. Oh my God. Oh, Yeah, it broke the azimuth. Uh, luckily, I still have that Lamson hooked up right there. Oh, you can see it. Right there. So I'm pretty pumped to use that. It's a super fast rod. But, kind of weird considering that the 31 and a half inch redfish that I caught the day before didn't do anything to the rod, but maybe that was what weakened it. I'm not really sure. Either way, those are two prime examples of fish that ate this fly, and it's a super easy tie. It shouldn't be much work involved as far as uh, laborious materials or anything. It's cheap. You can make like six of them for like, I don't know, 15, 20 bucks. I would definitely recommend them for muddy water, or stained water, high tide, low tide, winter, summer, fall. As long as the conditions are present and the fish are eating, they're going to eat this fly. So anyway, just a check in for me. I'm going to be doing some more fishing here soon. Ace and I are gearing up to go to Florida to try out a new boat and uh, yeah. The Rover's up for sale. If you haven't seen it, it's on uh, Facebook Marketplace in Charleston. If you're interested in the Rover, hit me up. I'm down to talk and make a deal. Hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you haven't already. If you liked the video, hit that thumbs up and uh, I'll see you next time. Okay guys, all right.